welcome back to 20 somethings tv i'm rachel i'm here with nate dan quiggs and special guest ariana we have a lot of different types of topics today all over the map and first we're going to start off with sports where a quarterback for university of las vegas has apologized for eating sushi off of a nude model's body nate could you tell us a little more about that sure so max gillum is the quarterback from the university of las vegas and he went on a reality show called Below Deck with some of his friends. And as you just said, he ate sushi off a nude model's body. Now, Gillum did have an apology that he put on Twitter because there was a lot of backlash from it and the school did not like it. Um, so he did apologize for it. Um, but it does seem a little bit uh, now that He's doing it after the fact. He's being reactionary about it. So do you guys accept his apology and should he ex uh, accept more accountability for it? I mean, I think, I don't think it's like the biggest scandal out there really. You know, like, I feel like, I don't know what people could, I mean, obviously I know he has to be professional and like whatever, but I feel like there's not much offensive off of that. It, as long as the model consented, of course. But I feel like, I mean, maybe it's just professionalism that like you should be aware of, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's that like offensive to some people, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think it is kind of more like in the sense that he didn't know he had to apologize to anyone in the first place when he did it because nobody was telling him he had to. And like it really in the instance that like he was doing it, uh, I mean, it, he was eating sushi off of a model like it seem to have been some sort of business arrangement i think that like the real issue might be more along the sides of like collegiate athletes making money rather than the particular act he did because i don't think that what he did would be per se wrong if he weren't a college athlete or if he wasn't in the spotlight that he was but i think that maybe some of the aspects of what he was engaging in definitely weren't right for uh, what he's supposed to be doing for his school and team. I think um, the like nude sushi girls point to like a larger problem in society of sexism, but I don't think like the on individual cases, it's necessarily like the biggest deal. Um, I think we have bigger fish to fry with like actual sexual harassment where like the woman isn't getting paid. Um, and once we're done with that, I feel like we can talk about need sushi girls. <laughs> I mean, I agree with Quiggs. I feel like it's definitely not the biggest issue, but I do kind of think his apology was insincere because he was kind of like, hey guys, sorry, but my producers told me to do it. Like, it wasn't like he really owned it. So I feel like he could have been a little more genuine there. Just like, if you think about like people who might look up to him, like younger kids who are into college football and things like that. Like, I feel like that wasn't really a good role model choice of his, but. Yeah, it just seems like it's another thing of a college athlete or a young superstar kind of athlete just being stupid. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, and, you know, I feel like there's a lot of scandals with sports and athletes for some reason, like just it's them in the spotlight. Um, but now we're going to talk about marijuana, speaking of some sort of scandals. Um, the House has passed a sweeping legislation that would decriminalize marijuana and expunge certain convictions. Obviously, a lot of states, everyone's been noticing, have been legalizing marijuana over the past few years, and this new law would require federal courts to release those serving sentences for nonviolent marijuana-related offenses and set up programs for these people in the future. So my question to you guys is, do you think weed should be legal, and how long do you think it'll take for it to be completely legal in the US? I don't really see a problem with weed being legal uh, as long as you're not driving um, while being high because it does impact your reaction time. But other than that, it seems harmless. I mean, there's not re really a lot of health risks involved um, it, other than like stays in your system. Um, so other than that, it doesn't really, other than driving, it doesn't really seem like a risk um, to others, which seems like it would be a reason to keep it illegal, but I think it should be legal. Yeah, I think that Nate's kind of right in the sense that weed is something that does impair you 
a small amount, kind of like alcohol does. And it's, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a drug. It's, it's similar to a medication and like the usage of it. And like, really, I medications, they all have warnings not to operate motor vehicles on them and everything like that. And I mean, obviously, alcohol has that on it, uh, saying not to drink it if you're pregnant, not to operate vehicles on it. And I mean, really, with all the dangers that those medications and even alcohol carry, like just off of basic health complications, not how they might impair you behind the wheel or something like that. I think that if those are all legal and open to our use, then weed should have been this whole time, too. Um, I live in a legalized state, and it's been legal here for at least over a year now, I think. Um, and nothing's really changed. Like, people aren't, like, walking around the street like zombies or something like that. Um, and honestly, like, the, the real, like, change I've noticed is, like, I think people are paying more attention to the fact that, like, there's this, like, huge cannabis, like, Martha Stewart-esque, like, um, uh, business going on, but people are, like, still in jail for, like, the smallest, like, dealing crimes, um, usually people of color. So I just really wish that, like, if these, like, super privileged states like Massachusetts are, like, able to, like, have this industry, that, like, people wouldn't be in jail over it cross-country. Yeah, I think it's a step in the right direction for sure, because, like, like you said, like, I know in Mass, I see some of the dispensaries, they literally, literally look like Apple stores, like, they are high tech, the security is crazy, and then there's still people in marijuana, in prison for having, like, a gram on them, like, it just doesn't add up to me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of, it would be like keeping moonshiners in jail after the prohibition ended. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. <laughs> Alrighty. So now we're going to go on and talk about more legally law things. Um, Los Angeles has recently sworn in a new county district attorney, George Gascon, after he defeated the eight-year incumbent district attorney, Jackie Lacey. Dan, do you want to tell us a little more about that? Yeah, so um, George Gascon just got um, put into office as a district attorney of LA County in California. And um, this was after defeating eight-year incumbent Jackie Lacey. So this was a very big accomplishment for him. But I think really what I'm more excited about to see out of this is the real reform he's looking to bring to LA because it's been one of those counties that's had really bad issues with law enforcement over the past 40 years. You go back to the 1990s and everything, with the riots and all that after the Rodney King beatings. And I mean, all of that was fueled by a police force that was unmonitored and really allowed to walk all over the people of the county. So it really, I mean, civil outrage has been there for a while and he's come in, he wants to eliminate cash bail, trying to open up like um, the justice system and make it a little bit less discriminative towards people who don't have the money to get themselves out of a cell. Uh, he wants to eliminate the death penalty, saying that it doesn't really have any use. He says that it's racist, morally untenable, irreversible, and expensive, which really, in California, with the amount of people that they have on death row, he's very correct in making that statement. And he also wants to end the trying of children as adults. And so, really, he's reviewing every case that somebody's been in jail for over 20 years. I mean, his his goals are uh, very high, if, if you might say so. And so, of course, this has made him a controversial figure. The LAPD have already labeled him as an ally to criminals and gang members, while uh, victims and law-abiding citizens have lost a voice in his election. And um, really, just like with all the things that he's doing and trying to reform the criminal justice system in LA, do you think that these are positive strides in a community that's kind of struggled with law enforcement over the years? Or do you think that he should be pumping the brakes a little and be kind of implementing this a little bit slower and gradually so people are a little bit less up in arms about it? Um, I think it's great that he's going so fast about it. Um, I think this like hemming and hawing about um, we can do it next year or we can have like a five-year plan about things is like what is like rotting our country um 
So I think to see somebody finally just be like, actually, I'm going to do this now um, and I'm going to do it the right way and I'm going to do it 100 percent is like exactly what we need to see in the country, especially in a city as important as L.A. Yeah, change is good. And I think that him trying to come in and make change is really good, too, because this year has been really I, it has not been a good year for law enforcement. So I think, you know, to have someone in there who's trying to make it better is a good thing. Yeah, I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. I mean, I really hope that more people like him are sworn into like um, other like large cities. Um, I think it's just great that he has that. And he even says that it's going to be like punishment should be more of a rehabilitative and restorative purpose, which I think is like amazing. Like it should really be for like treatment and people getting help for like whatever's going on instead of just shutting them up and making them probably even worse mentally. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like how he says that punishment should be proportional and should have the community's best interest in mind because so many times it's really more about just retaliation rather than actually making sure that things get better from this like you're supposed to learn from your mistakes if that's what the criminal justice system is supposed to accomplish in rehabilitating people then that's what they should actually be striving for rather than looking to just put in maximum sentences for people that really didn't do all that wrong mm -hmm. so i think that that's really good to see uh he's also just looking into um any police shooting since 2012 and he's just going to be reviewing those as well to really make sure that the crackdown's real and that we don't continue to have those issues, especially in a place like Los Angeles. Yeah, I totally agree too. Like that, what you just said, um, Tyler, about him, like everything should be proportional. The only thing I'm kind of like iffy on is when um, he was saying like the death penalty is irreversible. Like, yeah, I totally agree. It is irreversible. But like some of the crimes that people do like are also irreversible. So I feel like if someone like murdered somebody, like they should be considered for the death penalty because like they did something to somebody else that's irreversible. So like, why should they be like, you know, stuck in prison? I mean, on the other hand, it's like, yeah, good rot in prison, but also it's like that a person that you killed or did something horrible to like can never have justice and can never like see the light of day again. So it's I'd like- I'd argue that kind of rot in prison is kind of worse, is a worse punishment because you know, if you, you're getting the quick death, then you didn't really suffer for what you did. Yeah, no, but I do know, I do understand that argument in the case. I think that's why a lot of people are going to be upset about it, because if somebody killed or hurt somebody se severely that you love, then why would you want to see that person live another day? I get that. It's like if there's some crimes that we do see fit as to punish by death and okay. like murder and like capital murder like rape and stuff like that, I definitely agree that some of those like people should be sentenced to death. But like, I mean, I do agree with Nate also in the fact that they're not letting them go into public, they're resentencing them to life in prison. And a lot of cases that could be worse than just being killed within the first couple of years you're there. Granted, the death row process usually takes a lot longer but uh, all that weighs on the taxpayer dollar and everything. And it really, and it shouldn't take as much money and time as it does. And unless you, unless the criminal wanted to live the rest of their life behind bars, then you could say the death penalty would be the punishment that fits them. But I don't see why you'd want to live behind bars the rest of your life. It doesn't seem like it would be good. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's a very interesting subject. Um, I'm glad this guy's, you know, hired, but in terms of the death penalty, there's a lot of different um, aspects of it that can kind of conflict each other. So we'll see how he does, but I do hope with all his other um, things he wants to do in office that he will follow through, hopefully. So now we're going to go on to a little bit of a lighter topic, TikTok. Um, a Sherwin-Williams worker has been recently fired from his position because of his viral TikTok account where he posts videos of him mixing paint colors. Quaze, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so basically this part-time Sherwin-Williams um, senior sales associate, so he wasn't just like just hired. Um, he'd been working there for like three years, um, has a super viral TikTok account. It blew up super fast. Um, 
and he basically just mixes paint. Um, and at a certain point, he realized, like, wait, this is, like, an awesome marketing opportunity for this company because um, they can create brand recognition and, like, a younger base, which I don't think Sherwin-Williams really has necessarily or, like, any paint brand. But instead, they just, like, they were, like, number one, no. <laughs> number two, you're fired. Um, and he posted about it online, of course, that be, that went viral. Um, and all these other paint companies were like, Sherwin Williams, you made a huge mistake. We're going to snatch this guy up who's so passionate about paint and has like millions of followers. Um, so now he's working for a company called Florida Paints. Uh, personally, I think Sherwin Williams made a big mistake. Um, and they definitely shouldn't have let him go. What do you guys think? Uh, it certainly seems like uh, the head of Sherwin Williams has a vendetta against TikTok or some kind of social media or getting the name out there. Because other than that, I don't see why you would fire someone like that. Uh, it's really um, just a suggestion to try to get the name out there. And it seems counterproductive to fire someone that's trying to make your company better. They cited um, gross misconduct in the fact that he was making the videos during um, or with the machinery that uh, he had at work, but he was buying all his own paint to mix. Which That's is where the whole idea is to use what it, the company gives you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think they even should, like, sure they could say, hey, you know, no, we're not using that as like a marketing thing maybe tone it down but to fully fire him is just like they just went straight to get out of here and i think that's just like so extreme <laughs> yeah his videos were like i mean i've seen them honest honestly and like they were super satisfying because it's like kind of like a little game like oh like what color is it gonna be and it's like i care absolutely zero about paint but watching the videos it was pretty cool i'm like okay maybe i'll like get a cool paint color and do some something cool. So I feel like, yeah, they definitely missed out on a good opportunity to grow their business. And like, honestly, like there's a Sherwin Williams near my house and I never see anybody in there. So it's like, it sucks for them. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that really, if they wanted him to do something differently in his videos, they could have told him that. Um, if like they wanted him to use a different platform, they could have told him that. I mean, there were so many different avenues they could have gone with it. And, and at the end of the day, like you said, Ariana, it's just promotion for them. Like you get free promotion off of this kid mixing paints, which is what he's already there to do. I mean, he's paying for the materials on top of that. And so it's like, really, I, I, if they didn't want him to do it that badly on any site, uh, any way, then they could have just told him that. And I think that if they needed to do some, like if they needed to discipline him, then that might've been okay but firing a three-year employee over doing something that he thought would improve the company image, I don't, I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I, I've seen his most recent TikToks and his new, his new company, Florida Paints, is like all over it. Like he's promoting it and they're fine with it. And I'm so happy for him. You know, maybe he can work up to like other paint companies like Bear. I think that's one. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I hope he has great success in his life. So our last topic is, of course, COVID. Can't go an episode without mentioning it. Um, over in the UK, they just began rolling out first doses of the COVID-19 vaccine on today, um, the Pfizer vaccine. And the first recipient was a grandmother, Margaret Keenan, who turns 91 this week. She received the first shot at one of the hospitals at 6.31 a.m. Um, she's a little adorable lady and it's amazing. And the first 800,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine in the UK are gonna be for people over 80 who are either hospitalized or already have outpatient appointment schedules and nursing home workers. So on that note, a lot of people are starting to get the vaccine. I've heard of some people in my life, like nurses who are like, yeah, I'm getting it in a few weeks. And I feel like it happened very suddenly. I mean, of course I knew it was coming, but I was like, oh, a few weeks. That's <laughs> obviously I want it. So my question to you guys is, will you be taking the vaccine? And do you know anyone in your life who is getting the vaccine soon?
really great touch with any first responders or any of like the first on the list to get it. So I'm not really sure of anyone in my life who may be getting it. Personally, if the vaccine's available to me, then I'll get it. I mean, if I, I mean, so long as like, I mean, since I'm not going to be the first group, it's kind of like, hey, you guys take this first and then I'll see if I'm going to do it later. But it's really like that. That's my only choice at this point. I can't be the first one to get it. Obviously, I don't know if I'd want to be the first one to get it. But like as it rolls out and as it get lower on the list in terms of who needs it and it finally gets to me, then at that point, I think I'll have a decision. But right now I'm still up in the air because it's kind of like we rushed to push this out. It was under an administration that I don't particularly trust. So like, I mean, I know, I know it's an independent company with independent employees just working to cure disease, but I, I'm still a little bit precautious about this. And I really just want to, like, I mean, everyone who should, like, who needs it should get it first. In healthcare, she'll be one of the first people to have it. Um, and then probably my grandmother will probably be one of the first people to get it because she's uh, in the elderly. So, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be taking it once, it once it's available to me. Um, I have no problem uh, with taking it. Uh, it's just, it's a positive thing that it's already out there and it's already, uh, people are already taking it. And we'll see what the, how it works. No clue when she's getting it still which seems a little weird because like she's a nurse <laughs> um but in terms of me getting it uh it feels awful to say but i'm almost like kind of glad i can't get it first because like like dan said like we're gonna know if something weird happens um and i don't think there's gonna be a lot of risk left for us once we can get it so i don't see why i wouldn't yeah i 100 percent agree with quigs and dan um I also know a lot of first responders and I also haven't really heard anything either. So that's interesting that you haven't either, Quigs. I'm like, that's very strange. But yeah, for me, like people who need it, like Dan said, first we'll get it. But it's like, by the time it gets down to us, like I'm not an essential worker really at all. So by the time it gets down to me, hopefully all these things that came up will already be addressed. But I mean, I definitely think it, within the next six months, like we're all going to probably get it. So it's like, is that really enough time to see any long-term risks? No. So it's kind of like a toss up, like a coin toss for me. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that completely. I think, and I'm not even anti-vax. I've gotten every other vaccination that has been given to me, but like, it's just when it was developed so fast, I mean, like there were vaccines have taken lifetimes to develop. And like, I just, I mean, I'm just a still a little bit uncomfortable with the idea of it, I, I, I don't fear that it will kill me because I know there was a trial process, but definitely a different type of situation than going in and getting like the HPV vaccine or something like that. Things they've tried where like long-term effects won't even show up for like years. So it's like, we like no one's gonna wait that long obviously so it is like that risk but considering probably every the majority is gonna take it then it's just like if we all 